1946. The war is over. The ships are home. The battle-wearied men and women have returned to pick up the business of life again. And to pick up the life of business. One man, 33-year-old Ken Thomas, takes the first ambitious step to manifest a vision. He buys one truck and K.W. Thomas Transport is on the road. During the next few years, the trucking fleet increases rapidly in size, providing a fledgling but very efficient transport service. Nineteen forty-nine, Viennese-born Peter Abel starts a new life in Australia after working in his family's merchandising and ore business in Hungary. In nineteen fifty, he teams up with George Rocky and together they buy two trucks. All Trans Transport is born. Nineteen sixty-one. K.W. Thomas Transport branches out to all capital cities of Australia, establishing road and rail links across the country. So the company name is changed to Thomas Nationwide Transport. In 1962, goes public. Meanwhile, all trans, under the entrepreneurial skill of Peter Abels, acquires lucrative freight forwarding contracts to haul cement and limestone products. And beer for Tui's Brewery. Then, Bill's transport is bought. And in 1962, Ross Cribb, formerly of TNT, now running his own transport company, joins Peter Abels at All Trans as general manager. As All Trans expands, the need for greater efficiency is recognized. An IBM powered computer is installed, a first for an Australian transport company. Competitiveness between the two companies heats up as both manning directors thrive on a duel for success. But in 1964, fierce competition momentarily gives way to a joint venture. Comet Overnight Transport, already well established by Alltrans, is the vehicle which brings both companies together. Alltrans sells 50% of Comet to TNT. In the same year, All Trans undertakes its first quest for overseas business. In conjunction with the New Zealand Railways, All Trans sets up the first Dominion-wide door-to-door rail service. The move across the Tasman Sea whets the appetite for more international ventures in the near future. Nineteen sixty four to nineteen sixty seven. And expansion by both companies accelerates. Thomas Nationwide Transport buys the Australian subsidiary of the British based Transport Development Group, bringing new services for TNT. TNT now incorporates Rudders, one of the oldest transport and customs agent companies in Australia, as well as TNT car carrying and TNT warehousing.
1967. An historic year in Australian commerce. The two transport companies for so long have been enterprising competitors agree on a merger. Under the banner of TNT, the resultant partnership creates the largest transport group in Australia. In 1968 sees the part acquisition of the coastal shipping and tanker operation R.W. Miller. A forecast of international ocean-going transport for TNT. Containerization reaches a sophisticated level, drastically reducing loading and unloading time. Streamlining door-to-door -door delivery and considerably reducing pilferage. Late 1968, TNT negotiates the takeover of Australia's biggest and most successful overnight parcels express company, Quick As Air. Looking farther afield, in 1969, a freight forwarding branch is set up in the United Kingdom. The Rudders London head office establishes a worldwide door-to-door -door transport network linking Australia with New Zealand, Britain, Europe, Southeast Asia and North America. And financial journalists herald the cash purchase of one of the oldest and largest Californian trucking companies, Walkups Merchants Express. TNT becomes the first Australian surface carrier to establish a service in the United States. The walk-up's name is changed to Alltrans Express California, and TNT proposes to use the company as a springboard to expand across the country, state by state. 1970, and TNT moves into Canada, taking over Gill interprovincial lines with a view to linking the two North American subsidiaries. Shortly after the name is changed to Alltrans, Quick As Air Express is established. Rapid expansion sees the acquisition of Overland Express, the Trojan and Quebec groups, and other specialist transport companies. The Pacific Basin also attracts the attention of TNT in 1970, and a move to acquire a one-third interest in Bulk Ships Limited is successful. In Australia, associated steamships container vessels are providing a coastal service from Brisbane through to Perth, and are later to play an important role in establishing the TNT group in the North Atlantic. April 1971. Protracted negotiations lasting 12 months between TNT, P&O, the New Zealand government and Kiwi businessmen reach their climax. TNT buys 50% of the Union Steamship Company, opening up further the sea freight lanes between Australia and New Zealand. On the 1st of January 1972, the greatest honour that can be given to an Australian citizen is bestowed upon TNT's managing director by Queen Elizabeth II. Emile Herbert Peter Abels becomes Sir Peter Knight Bachelor for his services to transport, charities and universities. Monday, March the 20th, 1972. The news presses stop, headlines are changed, radio and television news reports lead their bulletins with words which stun the financial world. A TNT share raid bags 23.5% of ANSET. Australia's massive ANSET transport industries group, which includes the country's free enterprise domestic airline, has a new major shareholder. Within a month, TNT makes another bid, this time for a complete takeover. A fierce battle ensues. Offer and counter-offer are made. ANSET asks the federal government for support to halt the takeover. The airline's pilots strike. Loyal ANSET employees buy up shares. A high-level government inquiry into the takeover bid is ordered. And an interstate war develops as the Victorian government freezes the offer from the New South Wales-based company. TNT has no option but to withdraw its offer. 
However, its initial financial interest is retained. Meanwhile, the man who always spoke of himself as just a truckie retires. Founder of TNT, Ken Thomas, steps down as chairman of the board after leading Thomas Nationwide Transport from success to success for 26 years. Towards the end of 1972, a man who is on the boards of at least 20 companies, a man who has a legal background, Fred Miller, is elected chairman of the TNT board to replace Ken Thomas. The same year, TNT establishes an express parcel service between the UK and Europe. Plans are made to expand across Europe, and the UK operations are also expanded, leading to the acquisition of British-based Intercounty Express a few years later, in 1978. Mid-1973 sees TNT expanding further afield by moving into Brazil, opening up South America. And into Singapore, where opportunities for the company are ready to be unlocked in Southeast Asia. And in the US, the acquisition of Acme Fast Freight, one of the largest rail carriers in the country. Also in 1973, the Marathon Transport Company of Queensland, owned by the Jackson brothers, is merged with TNT's existing North Queensland operation. Now managed by the Jacksons, the largest carrier in the state of Queensland emerges under the Carpentaria Transport banner. A new Australian Parcels Express division is formed. TNT Couriers in direct competition with Comet Overnight Transport. The move hones the two courier companies to a fine edge. In 1976, in another move to expand the international shipping business, TNT forms with American interests trans freight lines in the United States, competing with US, British and European transatlantic shipping companies. Still in the US, TNT sells Acme in 1978 after the board decides not to persevere with rail, but wait for better opportunities to move into trucking. 1978 also finds TNT acquiring an 11% interest in ABC Container Line, a non-conference shipping company operating between Europe and Australia. In time, the equity becomes 50% and 1984 sees its 10th ship in service. 1979. A Christmas celebration for TNT. Eight years have passed since the tussle for the Ansett Transport Group and time is ripe for a new approach. TNT makes a successful bid for a 50% shareholding and joins Rupert Murdoch's News Limited as an equal partner in the business. A philosophy is adopted for the airline to make it a world-class passenger carrier, to make it a six-star airline. Nineteen eighty-two. Pilot freight carriers of North Carolina, operating in 19 eastern US states, is taken over. The biggest addition to TNT's American road transport fleet. November 1982. And TNT subsidiary, Bulk Ships Containers, wins a contract to design and build a 150-kilometer gas pipeline in the Northern Territory, from the Palm Valley Field to Alice Springs in Australia's center. Already, bulk ships, TNT's shipping arm, have been responsible for many innovations. Specialized bulk vessels for products like alumina, a new generation of coal-fired ships, offshore supply vessels to service oil rigs, and providing port facilities, including a coal loader. Skypac and IPEC Europe are purchased in 1983. 
TNT Skypack is merged with the existing TNT Courier International operation, making TNT Skypack the second largest international courier in the world. IPEC Europe becomes TNT IPEC, operating from 81 terminals in 11 European countries. Holland Motor Express, based in Michigan, USA, is acquired in 1984 to complement the US trucking operations. Today, TNT, an Australian company, is a global corporation. even though it touches every corner of the earth and has billions of dollars worth of assets and revenue. Still, TNT is very much a people company through and through. In Australia, TNT covers a vast range of freight forwarding operations. From delivering a small parcel interstate to shipping containers and bulk materials to Southeast Asia. Ansett Transport Industries, of which TNT owns 50%, includes domestic airlines, freight services, hotel and holiday complexes, and manufacturing industries. Just as TNT's transport services shrink Australia's vast distances rapidly and efficiently, the company is doing the same for international clients. In the United States, in over 92 centres, TNT's operations cover road and piggyback freight across the country. And shipping with links up and down the Atlantic Ocean and to Europe. In Canada, TNT is recognized as one of the major transport groups, operating from 51 terminals across the country. Brazil, and TNT is there as Transtotal, Quick as Air, and Transpampa. In the United Kingdom, TNT operates from over 40 locations, with services including express road freight, materials handling, and international shipping. In the land of the long white cloud, TNT is involved in rail, road and shipping operations. Auckland, New Zealand is the headquarters of the Union Steamship Company. Jointly owned with New Zealand interests, it links New Zealand with the Australian mainland, Tasmania and the Pacific Islands with 10 modern ships. And covering the whole globe in 60 countries with 200 offices around the world is TNT Skypack, a truly international courier service. For the year 1983-84, TNT's 32,000 people worldwide earned in excess of $1,700 million revenue for the TNT Group. Revenue expectation for 1984-85 exceeds $2,000 million, excluding TNT's other interests in Ansett Transport Industries, McElraith McEachran, Aero Pelican, Transocean Leasing, Union Shipping Group, Seatainer Terminals, Queensland Bulk Handling, and many others. TNT's objective is to be the world's most successful transport organization. To achieve this, we have to provide the best and most efficient transport service. The best management team possible 
to earn sufficient to reward our employees, shareholders and lenders and provide a solid base for our continuing operations and growth. To be recognized as a good corporate international citizen. And really, we are only just beginning. Now we've made it in the big time And there's nothing we can't do But we're only just Yes, we're only just beginning, and we'll keep on 